grade sevens, this is Helen and this means that it's time for natural sciences. We have been investigating and studying how insulation works to block heat energy transfers. And we've reached the end of our section on insulation, so it's time to wrap up and find out how much did you learn. So today is your at-home test. So I hope you've got some paper ready and we're going to test your knowledge. And the very first question we're going to do or answer is our very, very basics. We need to know what we mean by this word insulation and we need also to know what is an insulator. Now I want to challenge you that you're able to write sentences that are meaningful sentences that are able to define these terms. Remember that insulation is a process that is going to reduce or slow down or maybe even prevent. And I want you to make sure that one of those terms is in your answer. Another term that must be in your sentence is heat energy. And we're blocking the heat energy transfer from an area of greater heat or hotness to an area that is colder. So those items must be present in your answer. Now if we move to what is an insulator, the insulator is, and here you can use a number of different terms as well, the substance or the material that is going to be used that does the reducing or that is going to act as the block on this heat energy transfer. So it could be a substance, for example, like air, or it could be a material, maybe something like feathers. That is going to act as the insulator. So the insulator is the thing that does the insulating. Now let's answer some true or false questions and hopefully you are fully aware of what you know here unlike our little penguin who's a bit blind here. So let's help you. Wearing a hat will keep the cold out. There is your tricky statement. Does wearing the hat keep the cold out? Because our penguin is the hot object, the environment is the cold, is the hat going to keep the cold out? Well, this is an example of a false statement. Remember, being cold simply means there's less heat. What the hat is going to do is insulate you against heat energy transfers. So in fact, to make it true, we would have to say, the heat in, the hat keeps the heat in, not the cold out. The cold doesn't move. Materials that trap air are good insulators. Think about the fur on Arctic wolves or the feathers on our penguin. They trap air and therefore they are good insulators. A material with high thermal conductivity is a good insulator. Now let's look at this term, high thermal conductivity. So if something is a high or a good thermal conductor, that means that they're going to speed up or allow this heat energy transfer to happen rapidly. That means that they're not a good insulator. So that statement then I hope you saw is false. Fridges have insulated walls and an insulated door to prevent the transfer of the heat energy from the surroundings into the fridge. And this time we've got it right. We're not saying that cold is escaping from the fridge. We're saying that we're preventing, here's our fridge, we're 
which is cold, we're preventing the heat from the surroundings from being transferred into the cold fridge. So this time, it's true. Energy can be transferred faster through thin house walls than thicker house walls. And so you remember what we learned that the thicker an insulator is, the better it is at doing its job of insulation. So we can say that that one is also true. I hope you got those answers correct as well. Now we're going to move on to a long application question. Let's read our question carefully. A scientist has tested four different insulating materials. We don't know what those insulating materials are, but we've named them A, B, C, and D. And our scientist wants to find out which is the most effective insulator. And she uses each material to insulate a container. She, so she's got her container and her container is, or her first container is going to be insulated with material A. Her second container, which unlike my diagram should be identical to the first container, is going to be insulated with material B. We're also going to have the same setup for material C and material D. She pours hot water into each container and she is going to measure the temperature of the water at the start of the investigation and after 30 minutes. And this is a table of her results. At the start, time zero, she made sure that the water is at 70 degrees C, right? And in each case, for each of the materials that she was testing, her starting water temperature was 70. After 30 minutes, she measured the temperature again. And she found that it had dropped to 34 degrees for substance A. For material B, it had dropped to 30 degrees. For material C, it had dropped to 50 degrees. And material D was down at 48 degrees. So in each case, there had been a decrease in the temperature. So we know that in each case, heat energy was transferred from her container. But because the temperature at the end of our investigation is different in each case, we know that the energy transfer was different in each case. And the only thing that was different was the kind of insulator that was wrapped around our container. So let's answer some questions. Here's our results table again to remind us of what the results were. Let us identify the independent variable. Remember, you look at the word independent and you think of investigator. And that is the dependent, uh, that is the variable that our investigator is controlling. What was she controlling? She was controlling the different kind of insulating material. So she was controlling each setup had a different insulating material. So all of those insulating materials, A, B, C, and D, whatever they were, that is the independent variable. What was she measuring? Because the measured variable is called the dependent variable. It is going to depend on what the insulating material was. And in each case, what did she measure? She measured temperature. And our units were in degrees Celsius. Now, what variables should she have controlled to ensure that her investigation was a fair test, that it was valid, that it was reliable, and that it was fair. 
Well, the size of the container. She can't do an experiment where one of the containers has one liter of water in it and another one has 500 milliliters of water. That is not going to make this a fair test. So the size of the container. She made sure that the starting temperature in each case was the same. So the temperature at the start was the same. She then would have made sure that the thickness of her insulating material was also the same because you already know that thickness of an insulator is going to affect its success as an insulating material. Let's now, in this case, draw a bar graph of her results. So what are we going to put on our x-axis? Remember, we put the independent variable. So we're going to label it different materials. And we're going to have A, we're going to show B, we're going to show C, and we're going to show D. Up the side or the y-axis, we're going to show temperature, and we're going to show it in units of degrees Celsius. Now, we can draw a scale on our graph and we can say that this is going from our lowest temperature that we dropped to was 30, 35, 40, 45, let's even go a little bit higher on our graph up to 50, 55, 60, oh we're going very high up here, 65 and 70. So in each case, we started off, our starting temperature was up at 70 degrees C. My graph's a bit messy and this should teach you the lesson of making sure that you leave plenty of space in a test to show your answers. At the end of 30 minutes, we're going to see a different graph and let's draw it in red. Tip, uh, material A dropped to 34 degrees. So we're going to show 34 degrees. Material B dropped right down to 30 degrees. Material C dropped to, we did across, 50 degrees. And material D dropped to just below that 48 degrees. So let's try and interpret our graph now. And let's use a different color to do the interpretation. We started off at one temperature and we see that our materials insulated this water in different ways. And we see that our best insulator was C. Why is C our best insulator? Well, it was the material that kept the water the warmest. In other words, it, material C, was the material that prevented our heat energy from being transferred to the colder outside. So material C is our best insulator followed by very closely by material D, material A, and then not a really good material at all, material B. So we can interpret our results and say this proves that material C is our best insulator while material B is our poorest insulator. And whatever our hypothesis was, we can now go back to our hypothesis and we can say, yes, we were right, material C is the best, or no, we weren't right, material A is not the best. So there we have it, guys. We've finished our work on insulation. Hopefully you understood all the questions today and you were able to shout out the answers. I'll see you again next time.
Goodbye.